What up everyone, welcome back to more Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater HD Edition. And we are pretty much nearing the conclusion of this epic game. And if you remember from last time, Snake and Eva were escaping towards the forest where they were going to encounter the boss for the final battle. But they had a crash and uh, Eva's been seriously injured. So now Snake has to clear a path for her so that we can escape. So let's begin. Alright, I think I've already got all of these bullets but I might as well get the rations because Eva's stamina runs out very quickly because she's injured. And you pretty much just have to lead her through the forest and hope that no one sees you. For this first phase you just have to be quick because there's a there's like a patrol coming from behind. So just keep moving and every now and again just gesture to her so that she keeps following you and this first section is pretty short and easy let me put on some some woodland camouflage let's try moss, moss is generally the best woodland camouflage but we'll see yeah, 30% is not bad Alright, so the patrols come in and we need to to do this quickly to make sure no one catches us. Again, this section should be clear if I remember correctly, provided that I keep moving. I think once Eva gets to below half stamina she starts to complain and then when she gets below a quarter then she stops moving. But let me see if I can find any other fruit that I haven't got before. So I can at least get a trophy for fruit. Fruit B. Not sure if I've got that one before. Obviously I must have because I haven't got the trophy. Or maybe there's more fruit. I thought there was three. Yeah, this section is just a little bit further ahead, but she's she's very slow. I'm so hungry. Yeah, there we go. So you have to be next to her, and then when you're next to her, you can you can feed her stuff. But I'm not going to feed her that because we don't want to kill her. Um, this tastes like crap. Quit complaining, bitch. Um, We're feeding you. Oh, yuck. Doesn't appreciate anything. Alright, we're almost out of this section. Just this little ledge here. And then we should be on the final phase of this, this woodland part. Snake, the lake is just over that cliff. Eva should be able to climb it if you help her. Keep her close to you. Alright, Zao's blah, blah blah east should be the final bit. And this time there are guards around, so the thermal goggles are going to help spot where they are. Let me take these guys out. It's quite easy to get an alert here, so as you can see, I'm at 35% and he still saw me. So 
Need to be careful. I'll ignore those those two guys for now. Okay, good. That should be it for this this first part. What is that? Okay. I think I've got that snake. Yeah, this is like my final kind of look around. This is the last time you're going to be able to mess around in the woodland, so I'm trying to make sure I get everything that I can. Just in case there's some trophies available. Fruit C. I think I don't think I've got that one before. There we go. So yeah, that's the trophy for all of the the fruit available in the game. I think there's like three or four. Not too difficult. other random stuff. Hmm. I thought there was a bird there, I was going to try and shoot it. Yeah, that thing. I guess it's not a bird. But that is. That thing glowing on the thermal goggles wasn't a bird for whatever reason. It's bird E. I remember I've, I've got a bird E before. I'm probably not going to be able to get the bird one. More of these plants. There's a trophy called the the Markor Trophy, and I think you literally have to collect everything that's edible in the game in order to get it. But obviously, I'm not going to do that for this one. I think there's some birds in in this little set of bushes here, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna blow them up just in case I'm like one bird away from getting the trophy. Let's see. Alright, cool. Bird D. I think I've got a bird D before as well. This area is a dead end, so as far as I know, there's not too much risk of being seen while you're at the top. You need to jump down, but let me see if I can take everyone out first. The trouble here is if I remember that a lot of them are lying down, so they're not always easy to spot. 65% camo should be fine. But as you can see, they're pretty difficult to find. What is that? I, actually, I know there's people down there, but I can't see them. For some reason. Shit. He's not going to be going anywhere. Just shoot him again. Watch out! We've got company. Oh shit! Oh no! I didn't realise they were going to come from behind there. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> oh yes! I love this gun. They got taken out so quickly they didn't even know what hit them. Well, that's one way to avoid an alert. Alright, let me get down here and see if there's anyone else. <laughs> that was awesome. Anyone else? He's asleep. No, I think it, the coast is clear. Oh. Oh shit! Ah. Oh. I think this is like the only area in the game where the guards are actually really well camouflaged. So. As you can see, I still triggered off an alert. But remember, this is all done in one take, so... If you're aiming for no alerts, you just know that there's a guy there for next time. Come on, hurry up. Oh! Where did he come from? Well, he got up that quickly. Alright, that's a dramatic end. And once Eva makes her way to this final ledge we should be done with the game and all that remains is the boss battle against well the boss so let's do it come on nearly there there we go
Come on, Snake. We made it. We made it. Over there. It's the boss, isn't it? I'll go get the wig ready to take off. Right. I'll leave you two alone. But come back in one piece, okay? Promise me! Life's end. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. When life ends, it gives off a final lingering aroma. Light is but a farewell gift from the darkness to those on their way to die. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss, why are you doing this? Why? To make the world one again. The world used to be whole. But with the end of the Second World War, the philosophers began to fight amongst themselves, and the world was torn apart. The Cobras, my comrades, who trained and fought alongside me, were torn apart as well. The foibles of politics and the march of time can turn friends into enemies just as easily as the wind changes. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yesterday's ally becomes today's opposition. And this Cold War? Think back. When I was leading the Cobras, America and Russia were fighting together. Now, consider whether America and Russia will still be enemies in the 21st century. Somehow, I doubt it. Enemies change along with the times, the flow of the ages, and we soldiers are forced to play along. I didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. So then what is an enemy? Is there such a thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the Cobras. They are my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. It was November 1st, 1951. I was in the Nevada desert, participating in atomic testing. The name Nevada is derived from Spanish, covered in snow, white as snow. And snow is exactly what I saw in that Nevada desert. It froze my blood white. Snake. You were an atomic test subject, weren't you? On Bikini Atoll. That's part of the reason I was drawn to you. You and I are alike. We're both slowly being eaten away by the karma of others. 
We'll never have the chance to die peacefully of old age. We have no tomorrow. But we can still have hope for the future. In 1960, I saw a vision of the ideal future from space. Three years earlier, the Soviet Union had succeeded in launching Sputnik, the first man-made satellite in history, into orbit. This came as a huge shock to the United States. In response, America threw everything it had into its own manned spaceflight project, the Mercury Program. Even as the Soviets seemed poised to send their first man into space, America was still experimenting with chimpanzees and rockets. The government wanted human data. So they secretly decided to send a human being into space. I was the one they chose. At the time, they didn't have the technology to block out cosmic rays, and whoever they sent up would inevitably be exposed to heavy radiation. That's why they chose me. After all, I'd already been irradiated once. Of course, you won't find any of this in the history books. I could see the planet as it appeared from space. That's when it finally hit me. Space exploration is nothing but another game in the power struggle between the U.S. and the USSR. Politics, economics, the arms race, they're all just arenas for meaningless competition. I'm sure you can see that, but the Earth itself has no boundaries. No East, no West, no Cold War. And the irony of it is, the United States and the Soviet Union are spending billions on their space programs and the missile race, only to arrive at the same conclusion. In the 21st century, everyone will be able to see that we are all just inhabitants of a little celestial body called Earth. A world without communism or capitalism, that is the world I wanted to see. But reality continued to betray me. In 1961, I was sent to Cuba, to Bahia de Cochinos. It was part of a CIA-sponsored invasion under the guise of taking Cuban exiles back to their country. But the U.S. government betrayed them. Our weak-kneed president held back their air support Defenseless, the exiles were annihilated by the Cuban army. All I could do was watch in silence. I was set up by the very country I'd sacrificed so much for, by the very government I dedicated my life to defending. I was driven from the surface world, and I went underground. Then, two years ago, I faced the sorrow, my old comrade in battle. He was my friend. But one of us had to die. I was left with no choice. The sorrow gave his life for me. There is no enmity between us. One must live and one must die. That was the mission. The ones who gave me that mission were the philosophers. Early in the 20th century, the true holders of power in the United States, the Republic of China, and the newly formed Soviet Union gathered together in a secret meeting that would later be known as the Wiseman's Committee. The secret pact they formed there marked the beginning of the philosophers. But the last of the original members died in the 1930s. After that, the organization began to run out of control and the Wiseman's Committee degenerated into a mere shell of its former self. The philosophers of today have no sense of good or evil. Their influence extends to countries and organizations involved in every aspect of every war. They have become war itself. That's how they operate. 
The sacrifices of war cause a shift in the times. This shift leads to renewed conflict and in turn triggers the next war. Like a nuclear chain reaction, each conflict sparks countless others, forming an endless spiral that will continue on for eternity. Do you understand what I'm saying, Snake? By consuming me and you, the philosophers intend to keep that cycle going forever. It was my father who explained all of this to me. He was one of them. You see, I am the last remaining child of the philosophers. But after he revealed the truth, my father was killed by that same shapeless, formless organization. And my father isn't the only thing the philosophers have taken from me. In June of 1944, the Cobras and I took part in the landing at Normandy. We'd been given a top-secret mission to locate and destroy enemy V-2 rocket installations. I was pregnant at the time. The sorrow was the father. I gave birth on the field of battle. A beautiful baby boy. But my child was snatched away from me by the philosophers. Look at this scar. This is proof that I was once a mother. I gave up my body and my child for my country. There is nothing left inside me now. Nothing at all. No hatred, not even regret. And yet sometimes at night, I can still feel the pain creeping up inside me, slithering through my body like a snake. I've never talked this much about myself before. Thanks. Thanks for listening to me. I feel content. Snake. Commence the operation. I raised you. I loved you. I've given you weapons, taught you techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life by your own hand. One must die and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. I'll give you 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, Migs will come and bomb the hell out of this place. If you can beat me in less than 10 minutes, you'll be able to escape in time. Let's make this the greatest 10 minutes of our lives, Jack. Boss. You're a soldier. Finish your mission. Prove your loyalty. Face me. All right, so the boss has explained her story to us. And before we face her, I am going to save. Just in case I screw this up. And join me next time for the... For the final Snake, boss battle save, and you? what should be the final part of the the whole game. So I'll see you then.